Welcome to the celebration of Mass for the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time from Assumption Church in River North, Chicago. How firm a foundation, you saints of the Lord, is laid for your faith in his excellent word. What more can he say than to you he has said, to you who for refuge to Jesus have fled? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. In today's second reading, St. Paul tells us to get rid of anger and malice and grow in kindness and compassion. Let's pause now and acknowledge our sinfulness. Lord Jesus, you heal the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You strengthen the weak. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You forgave the sinner. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call you Father. Bring to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. Elijah went on a day's journey into the desert until he came to a broom tree and sat beneath it. He prayed for death, saying, This is enough, O Lord. Take my life, for I am no better than my father's. He lay down and fell asleep under the broom tree. But then an angel touched him and ordered him to get up and eat. Elijah looked, and there at his head was a hearth cake and a jug of water. After he ate and drank, he lay down again. But the angel of the Lord came back a second time, touched him, and ordered, Get up and eat, else the journey will be too long for you. He got up, ate, and drank. Then, strengthened by that food, he walked forty days and forty nights to the mountain of God, Horeb. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy and your faces may not blush with shame. When the afflicted man called out, the Lord heard, and from all his distress he saved him. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Blessed the man who takes refuge in him. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with which you were sealed for the day of redemption. All bitterness, fury, anger, shouting, and reviling must be removed from you, along with all malice. And be kind to one another, compassionate, forgiving one another as God has forgiven you in Christ. So be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and handed himself over for us as a sacrificial offering to God for a fragrant aroma. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. I am the living bread that came down from heaven, says the Lord. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jews murmured among themselves because Jesus said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. And they said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph? Do we not know his father and mother? Then how can he say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered and said to them, Stop murmuring among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw him, and I will raise him up on the last day. For it is written in the prophets, they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to my Father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh 
for the life of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In recent decades, Assumption has been known more as a church for weddings and baptisms than for funerals. But that was not the case back in the 60s and 70s. As I look back through the sacramental records, we had lots and lots of funerals in those days. And many of them would have been people who had grown up in this neighborhood in the early 20th century when it was still a close-knit Italian community. And they may have moved away decades and decades earlier, but when they passed, there was that feeling of, well, let's bring mom, let's bring dad back home to the church where they began. Now, when I was in St. Louis, though, that was really a church for funerals. Uh, the zip code where our church was located had the highest average age of any zip code outside of the state of Florida. So one year we actually had more funerals than any other parish in the archdiocese. That's not exactly a statistic that you want to lead the league in, but we did. But what it meant was I spent a lot of time at wakes and funeral homes. And one of the things as you're standing at funeral homes you notice is that when old friends would come up to the surviving family members who were standing at the coffin, Instead of saying anything, they would just hug the person or embrace the person or hold their hands while they were standing, looking, and praying at the body. Because a simple gesture like an embrace can express things that are heartfelt in ways that words can't always express. That holding someone's hand or hugging them can't take away the pain of loss or wash away the grief. But it really says, you're not alone in this. I'm here with you. You don't have to go through this all by yourself. I'm here to support you. And you know, Jesus was a wonderful storyteller, wonderful preacher, a wonderful teacher. Even those who don't believe in God give him credit for that. But he also knew that words had their limits. And I think that's one of the reasons why he left us the Eucharist, the gift of himself, so that we could feel the embrace of his love and support whenever we needed it. Because sometimes what we really need is not more words, more advice, more explanations, more answers, more beautiful stories. What we really need is a hug. What we really need is to know that we are loved. And today's gospel, Jesus offers something very simple and yet awesome, something beautiful to the crowd. He says, I am the bread of life. I am the living bread come down from heaven. And people in the crowd started arguing about the words. Hmm? How can he be saying that? We know his relatives. They couldn't see beyond the Jesus they knew to the God of compassion and love. Just as sometimes it's hard for us to see past this little wafer to the God of love. And yet that's what the wafer is. Yes, Jesus offered his life on the cross to show us that he loved us. But sometimes we need something more immediate more physical, a gesture of companionship and understanding and support and love right now. We need to feel the touch of God. And that's really what Eucharist is, Christ coming to us in such an unassuming way. It can't be that simple, and yet it is. Elijah, in today's first reading, was ready to die, even though there was nothing physically wrong with him. He was just exhausted spiritually and emotionally and really, really tired and frustrated. And it's like, I've had it, 
I'm done. I can't do this profit thing anymore. I give up. I'm worn out. I quit. And you know, if you haven't felt that way at least once during the 15 months of this pandemic, I think you're probably on too much medication, all right? It's just like you tap one step forward and two steps backwards, and it's just exhausting to be back to masking again and back to this again. Huh? So what got Elijah to the point where he was exhausted? Well, the story happened about 850 years before Christ, and King Ahab had married this pagan woman by the name of Jezebel. And Jezebel influenced her husband to abandon God for the God of Baal. And all the politically connected prophets and priests supported this move. So the prophet Elijah was pretty much all alone. And yet he felt he was burdened with the responsibility of proving to Israel that Baal was not real. And so he engaged in this contest very bravely with the some 450 prophets of Baal, that each of them could set up a, an altar and see which sacrifice was accepted and embraced by God, which God would receive the sacrifice. So he took a great risk in doing that, but God came through. And after doing away with the prophets of Baal, Jezebel was mad mad about what Elijah had done and mad that he'd embarrassed her and her whole court. So she sends the army out after him and he takes off into the desert country and eventually he just collapses under this broom tree which doesn't really offer a great deal of shade. So he's hit the pits or if we want to use the classic language of a pilgrim's progress, he's in the slew of despond one of my favorite phrases. Well, while he's there, an angel, which is really the name of a messenger, comes. And this angel doesn't promise that he would slay Elijah's tormentors. He doesn't say, oh, snap out of it. Here, take a happy pill. Doesn't say you got to stay positive. You'll get over it. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. I think you need to make a gratitude list. He doesn't do any of those things. In fact, even though he's a messenger, he doesn't deliver any message. He doesn't give any advice. He just leaves a loaf of bread. And he says, eat this or the journey will be too much for you. And when Elijah had eaten the bread, that enabled him to resume the journey. He had just enough strength to keep going. The bread didn't fix everything immediately. He ended up going on this 40-day retreat at Mount Horeb. But there, he was able to recover his vision and go back down and continue his mission to feed others with God's truth. He needed the bread to keep going. And having been fed, he could go back and feed others. It's interesting that the word bread in Latin is panis, and the word with in Latin is cum. So to put them together, you have cum panis, or something like our English word, companion. And what really a companion is, is bread for your journey, bread to go with you. And in our journey through life, we need a companion or our journey will be too much for us, too. Now, our companion can certainly be our spouse or our friend or our cousin or our sister. And a companion, we don't expect a companion to solve all of our problems for us, but we do hope that they'll walk with us during our difficult times so we don't feel all alone. And what Jesus is trying to tell us in today's gospel is that he is our companion our companis on our journey. He is bread for our journey. He is the Eucharist, the bread of life. That when we receive Eucharist, we, it doesn't take away all of our problems, but it gives us the spiritual nourishment we need 
to continue the journey, to continue to live as a disciple of Christ. And while we don't have to contend with Queen Jezebel and the prophets of Baal, we do have to live out our faith in a secular world that doesn't offer the support it once did to those who want to stay on the right path. We're living in strange and, and changing times. And sometimes when we look around, the problems of the world just seem so overwhelming. The pandemic and the number of those who are sick everywhere, starvation, climate change, the endless wars, and in our own communities, uh, so much violence, so much death, so much lack of respect for human life in our world. And I think we really need the gift of the Eucharist, lest we give in to despair. So we'll have the strength to continue the journey so that we can contribute even in some small way to remaking the world in God's image. And even if we're not able to receive the Eucharist in person, we know that Christ can break through the barriers that physicality sometimes prevents. So I'm sure that your desire to receive Eucharist, even if you're not able to be here, is understood and received and reflected by God. We need the embrace of God, which is really what Eucharist is. Jesus is the bread of life. He's not going to remove all of our burdens, take away all of our anxiety, strike all of our enemies with lumbago, or make sure all of us are safe and healthy and that all of our children are above average. But he is going to be our companion. He's going to be bread for our journey. He's going to be with us through the joys and sorrows of life so that we don't give up, so that we too can be bread for others. And finally, so we can reach the eternal banquet of heaven. And now let's profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. We lift up our voices in prayer to the God who feeds us and nourishes us on our desert journeys for the church, that our ears may be opened to the wisdom of God's word and our spirits strengthened by the bread of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who endure hunger each day, that our hearts will be touched and their needs will be met. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have been wounded by the anger and malice of others, that they may be set free from the past to live life fully in the present. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For relief from extreme weather, that God will send help to those who are fighting fires and send rain to the areas suffering from drought. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For the gift of peace, that God will show us the way to end the violence in our cities 
so that all can live in safety and use their talents for the good of one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the pandemic, that the human family may be protected and the sick may be restored to wholeness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. God of all goodness, may we live always in your presence and be intent on drawing others to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Where charity and love prevail, there God is ever found, brought here together by Christ's love. By love are we thus bound. With grateful joy and holy fear, God's charity we learn. Let us with heart and mind and soul now love God in return. Forgive we now each other's faults as we our faults confess and let us love each other well in Christian holiness. Let strife among us be unknown, let all contention cease, be God's the glory that we seek, be our God's holy peace. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Lord of heaven and earth, through Christ our Lord. For by your word you created the world, and you govern all things in harmony. You gave us the same word made flesh as mediator, and he has spoken your words to us and called us to follow him. He is the way that leads us to you, the truth that sets us free, the life that fills us with gladness. Through your Son you gather men and women whom you made for the glory of your name into one family, redeemed by the blood of the cross and signed with the seal of the Spirit. Therefore now and for ages unending with all the angels we proclaim your glory as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life through your Spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son and confirm us in the bond of communion, together with Francis our Pope and Blaise our Bishop, with all other bishops, priests, deacons, ministers, and your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the Church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. And grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the apostles and martyrs and all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And we bring God gifts of peace to the world. Lamb of God, 
you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. We pray an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. O oh, Jesus, we adore you, who in your love divine Conceal your mighty Godhead in forms of bread and wine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O Jesus, we adore you, our victim and our priest, whose precious blood and body become our sacred feast. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Joyful, joyful, we adore Thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before Thee, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day.